Alright, this is 5th grade, module 6, lesson 13, and in this lesson students are going to be constructing parallel lines on grid paper. Kind of the cool thing is, in, in this lesson, students are going to be using what in later grades is going to be called like the slope triangle. So students are going to be getting this informal experience with the slope triangle and using that constant slope to create a variety of parallel lines. And that's how they're going to understand parallel lines is through that slope triangle. So let's get started. So on this slide, we're being asked to use our, our right angle template. So here's my right angle template and a straight edge. Now, I don't have a straight edge on my computer here, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of faking it. But we're going to use this right angle template to create three parallel lines down here on this grid. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, let's see, a straight line. So I'm going to use my straight edge, and I will draw a straight line. So there is my straight line. And I'm going to take that straight line, and uh, I'm going to put my right triangle on that straight line. Okay, so here it is, and, and I'll put it anywhere on that straight line. So I'm going to scooch it way over here. And then I'm going to follow the right angle, what, what, what we would call the hypotenuse, the, that big long side. And there is my length. This is the line that I'm going to be constructing other parallel lines with. Okay, so now I'm going to move my right triangle anywhere. I'm going to slide it along this uh, blue line, and then I'm going to draw yet another line right along that hypotenuse. All right, so that line is now parallel to the original one, right? And now I'm going to slide, oopsies, now I'm going to slide my triangle over and then I'm gonna draw a third line right along that hypotenuse right there so there are our three lines that are all parallel to one another and we know because we use that same uh, right triangle template to construct those lines there you go, there's our three parallel lines. Now parents and teachers, another idea that you could have done if you wanted to, um, you could have uh, you know, simulated this using high technology. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna delete a lot of this stuff because I'm gonna show you another way we could have thought of uh, slope. Like, because really the whole point of this is to help our students understand the concept and the meaning of slope. So let me just draw there's a line, all right? So now, what, what could we do to like demonstrate what does slope mean? Well, I could make a couple of copies of that line, and here is my, here are my three lines. So what I've done is I just took what used to be one, you know, one, and I'm just kind of sliding it, and I'm maintaining and I'm preserving that slope so here's another way to show how to create um, parallel lines. So here at this point, we're really just being informal, and we want students to identify which pairs are parallel. Because we're doing it so informally, uh, it's okay if there's a little bit of a disagreement that students might have in terms of whether the lines are parallel or not. For example, uh, we're supposed to be circling the segments that are indeed parallel. So we might say, well, okay, these look parallel, these two look parallel, this looks parallel, all right? This maybe looks parallel. Students might say, hey, I can't quite tell if those are parallel or not, or here, or here. And, you know, if there's some sort of conversation or discussion, that's cool. Uh, we don't have to agree on whether something is parallel. Uh, as long as the students are demonstrating in their conversation that they have a clear understanding of what it means to be parallel. So here we're going to be using that straight edge, 
which I'm going to have to simulate on my computer here, and to draw a line that is a segment that is parallel to the, the segment through the given point. So we've got this line right here, and it's, I'm supposed to draw a line parallel to it through S. So that's pretty straightforward. That's, you know, just kind of a flat line right there. Good enough, right? Doesn't have to be the exact same length as the above segment. B is also pretty straightforward because I can see just it's horizontal. I mean, this one's vertical. The other one was horizontal. That's pretty straightforward. Now, the idea is on these ones where it's a diagonal, how are we going to create a, a line that is parallel to this? Well, the idea is we want to identify the slope triangle. So I can see that the point is starting up here, and it's going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I can see it's going over 1, 2, 3. So our slope triangle goes down uh, 4 and over 3. So there is the triangle that we're talking about. I'm going to move that triangle so that the point is on U, the letter U, um, and then that gives me my slope. And it tells me the line should look like this. And there we go. And that is how I'm going to create a line parallel to the original, because I'm going to use a slope triangle. For example, oh, let's do W, or this one down here, E. So I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to identify what my slope triangle is. And here it is. There's my slope triangle. And then I'm going to move it so that any one of these, of the three points on my triangle, are touching W. It doesn't matter which point, which vertice. Uh, which corner of my triangle I want to use. I'll do this one right here. No, I'll do this one because I want to. All right, there. And then all I have to do is trace the hypotenuse right there. Boom. And now I have a line. This line is parallel to our original. So this is more of the same. The only thing that's a little trickier is they're not making it super obvious where our slope triangle is. So the idea is we can zoom in a little bit and you can see that we have a, a this line perfectly goes through a corner like a I don't know like hash marks the the horizontal and the vertical hash marks right here so I can see a point here and I can see a point here and that tells me that suggests to me that this is a slope triangle that we can use. Now there are other slope triangles that our students might be able to see and they can use those as well because the neat thing is it'll always work. It doesn't matter which slope triangle a student finds. In fact, here's another one that the students might have found. Oh, another, they might have found this one down here. They also might have found a larger slope triangle. They might have found this one right here. This is also a slope triangle that would work. All right. So we've got our choice. The smaller one or the bigger one, it doesn't matter which. In fact, we can use both. If we're supposed to draw two more lines parallel to B, I'm going to take my little slope triangle, put it anywhere, and then I'm going to trace the hypotenuse. There it is. There's a line. Now if I want, I can take this bigger one. I can move it anywhere I want. It doesn't matter where. I'll put it right there. I'll just kind of be awkward and sort of just kind of in the middle of everything. And then I trace the hypotenuse. And there are our two lines that are parallel to the original line B. And that wraps up Lesson 13 for 5th grade, Module 6. We're constructing parallel lines kind of in an informal way using a slope triangle.